Hello everyone, Jim Malis, your physics instructor. We're going to talk about uh, what's Physics 210 here at UWM, uh, spring semester 2020, but this stuff can be applied in a number of circumstances, a number of courses, hopefully throughout the years if necessary. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. I already miss you guys. Uh, here we go. Uh, we're talking Physics 210, Chapter 30, a look at some problems. These six problems are the goal right now for me to try to finish uh, today for you guys. Couple equi a few equations to kind of look at. Buick's of Arts Law, B vector equals mu zero over four pi Q times the quantity V vector cross R vector over R cubed uh, in differential form uh, in differential form and utilizing the fact that there, uh, you can kind of deal with current and charges uh, and manipulate things. If, if charges are moving, they create a current. Uh, the movement is associated with velocity and the charges are associated with Q. So from Q and from V, we can develop, uh, uh, we can develop a relationship related to actual current. So, as we said, this is B vector from Bjorn's of Arts Law. Uh, a lot of empirical evidence suggesting this is true. B vector equals mu zero over four pi Q times the quantity V vector cross R vector over R cubed. And DB vector differential form uh, of Bjorn's of Arts Law using current is the quantity mu zero over four pi I times the quantity DL vector cross R vector over R cubed. Uh, there is another very useful formula, you can do many, many things with it. F vector equals Q V vector cross B vector tells you the magnitude and direction of a charge uh, under the influence of a magnetic field when it's moving through that magnetic field in a particular manner. Uh, this right here is the B field associated with a long straight wire and this is the force per unit length uh, associated with two, uh, two current carrying wires. Here's the force per unit length associated with that. As we said, we're looking at this. We're going to try to do these problems, you guys. And that's about it. I mean, let, me, let me start racing and, and start going with it. This is, this is chapter 30. Let me try to at least have this stuff down for you and we'll see what we can do. I'm okay to erase here, I, I take it? Yeah, you're good. Okay, all right. Uh, so if that's the case, let me leave this a little bit for now and eventually get that off. So let's see what we got. Um, so for 17 from chapter 30, They're saying a straight wire carries a current of 5 amps. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field it produces at a perpendicular distance of 50 centimeters from the wire? So we're looking at this, and it's, it's about as easy as that is what it is. Um, let's look at it. Let's take it. Concentric circles that that are that are present. This is a concentric circle of 50 centimeters. We got to use the MKS system of units, SI system of units. 50 centimeters is 0.5 meters. When you do this, you 
there we are. Okay, uh, let's keep going a bit. Uh, let's look at 18. 18, too long. And then again, guys, this is right, right out of your book, so make sure you're looking at your book, of course, when you're, when you're looking, looking through this. Problem 18 from chapter 30. Um, two long, straight, parallel wires are shown in the figure. Uh, the current in the wire on the left is double the current uh, in the wire on the right. Uh, find an expression for the magnetic field at points A and B. Use identical coordinate system to write your answer in component form. So there's a number of ways we can kind of look at that. Let's see what we can say about it. So let's just make the drawing of it first. I mean, there's not, these aren't incredibly long here, so let's see what we can say about it. For 18, they're saying there's two wires. Uh, here's a wire, the current is coming right out at you. And here's a wire. Current coming right out at you. So let's see what we got here. They're, they're, you know, this one we're going to call I1. This one we're going to call I2. And they gave us the relationship that is existing here between the magnitudes, uh, regarding the magnitude of current. Uh, so let's have a look here. I mean, you've got this. telling us that's a distance r. That's a distance r. And b is over here. b meaning not b field, just the, the point b. Uh, and that's also a distance r. So there's r all over the place here. Um, they gave another point here, down, down here somewhere, c. And in regard to a perpendicular distance from there to there, you got this to this. That's 2R. And this guy, as we said, is this guy is C. So we got A, B, C, and we basically got to determine what's going on vis-a-vis -vis all that. Well, there's again, there's there's derivations that can be done that get us there. We've done up to this point, we've done that before, you know. Uh, before all of, all of these matters uh, have tr transpired as they have, uh, we do know this will work. So let's, uh, let's exactly see how we want to do this. I mean, for the for the whole process here, talking about A, B, C for the whole process. So let's see what we got. Um, they're essentially telling us that I two. is a particular amount of current, I. I1 is a particular amount of current twice as big as what that is. So, I mean, that's, that's the big takeaway on this one, and that's gonna like, drive the whole process here. As they said to us, you know, uh, the current in the wire on the left is double the current in the wire on the right. Uh, so rather than go I1, I2, I'll tell you what, let's make it a lot easier. There is, obviously it's I1, I2, but if, the current on the left is double what's happening over here. If this guy is simply going to be I, this is going to be 2I, and then from there proceed what's going on, proceed with what's going to be happening. Well, I mean, they both contribute. There's a lot going on here. Um, some of what's not being asked of us, we can, we can say, okay, well, look, there are, there's current coming out. There's current coming out, and, uh, you know, current coming right out at us. This guy's got a B field. If you do the right hand rule, B field's this way. So B field's down this way. The current I is that way. So I cross B, IDL cross B, it's gonna go that way. Same with this guy. This guy's got a, a, a B field associated with what he's doing. It's coming up that way. Comes up, this, comes up that way. Uh, I cross B, so this is gonna be, the fact that they're going in the same direction, there's gonna be an attractive force between them. That doesn't matter to us now. They just want to know the total B field that's happening. You're just going to do a vector sum. Uh, this guy right here, uh, there's a lot, lot to say regarding this. So let's see where we want to go, exactly how we want to say something like this. So let's see here. 
thing comes out like this, you could say, okay, well, part of part of what's happening here, here, this guy's coming out that way. Let me do the right hand rule. That right there comes around. So there's your B field there. This guy comes that way. Here's your B field here. So there's going to be, you know, there's, there's going to be some kind of cancellation. I don't think it's going to be total cancellation, but there's going to be some cancellation going on vis-a-vis -vis that uh, in this situation at point, at point A. Okay. Uh, for this guy right here, go right hand rule here. There's a B field going up because of this guy. B field going up. Uh, here, go this way. Hooks around, there's, there's another B field going up. So here there's not going to be a cancellation effect, there's going to be an addition effect. Here's going to be more of a cancellation effect. Um, see what's going on here. I mean, down here, this comes out that way. Bring it out that way, uh, right hand rule. Uh, we got something looking like this. B field doing that. Uh, for this guy right here, got something going here. Coming out this way, right hand rule here, there's something going that way. So, okay, this is going to be an interesting vector addition. There's going to be a vector, well, there's going to be a vector addition everywhere. Uh, here, here, and here. Uh, the question is, what's going to, you know, how exactly you're going to do it. Okay, so just have this in mind. Let me erase this stuff and let's, let's, let's take it. Let's just see where they're going to, let's write some of the stuff on here that we have to write. Um, so vector addition, vector addition, vector addition. Okay, tug of war right here. Here they're pulling together, and here you, know, you do the stuff we know how to do with vectors. Okay, so Okay, um, let's see, let's put it down here, let's take it. got here, man. You know, look at it and say, the general premise that you're doing here on, on everything that you're doing, in this problem at least, is and then from there we're going to do vector sums. I mean, you just got it. You're individually getting all these. Now again, I got all, all of these problems, you guys, are already in the notes. So if, if, if I'm not making sense in somewhat in person right now, uh, look at my notes on this thing and see what we can take about it. Um, we are looking at, for one of the scenarios here, you guys, you're looking at the fact that, uh, let me see how A is going to be. Now, I didn't like the way Cecilia wrote this whole thing, so let's see where the B field is on that. So let's look for B field for A, you guys. And like I said, maybe. So let's get this. Let's get this back up here. I think it might be easier for you if you can, if you can kind of see it here. Um, and uh, there's a point here. I said it was B. There's a point here. This was A. And somewhere down here, this was C. And let's see exactly where they had gone. They gone right down there. So A, B, C that way. Okay, so for 
this one we said that the current associated with it is 2i. The current associated with this one is i. And the way the stuff came out, I said, like, this guy's coming out this way. Uh, right hand rule, curl your fingers. You've got this guy doing this. This guy, curl your fingers. He's not doing as much because he doesn't have as much current. But you got this, and that's for the A scenario here. I didn't like too much the way I wrote it in my notes. Um, here, again, curl the fingers. This thing rolls up this way. Uh, curl your fingers here. The other guy also rolls up. Who's bigger than whom? Ah, we'll find out, I guess. Um, but when you're going here, you got to take the angle that's taking place. Again, we said that's R, that's R, that's R. This is 2R to go to here. Um, and comes this way and hit this. Uh, and this guy also hits and hits down here, not as big a vector because I is not as big as 2i. So that's basically where we're going here. Here's the, uh, the A, B, C scenario. Okay, it might be a little easier to look at that way, you guys. So you're looking at it, and let's just let's deal with it as, as is. I mean, I'm thinking the best, since we know for the B scenario, uh, I'm sorry, for the, for the A scenario, we are, we are what we said. It's going to be a little bit of a tug of war going on there. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. You can just write it like this. It's going to be straight up and down. There is the I is associated with up. I1 is associated with up. And I2 is associated with down. Um, So we got this. Uh, the distances are the same. Remember, the distances are the same, but the uh, there's a lot that's the same here. Is what is what's going on? I mean, you got basically at the end of the day here, you got mu zero over two pi r. The r's are the same. You got i one minus i two. Uh, i one is two i. Uh, so we had that earlier. We said I1 was 2i and I2 was, um, was just 1i. So if this is 2i and that's 1i, let's just figure this thing out. I mean, you got this. It's This is the B field at point A. Uh, it goes straight up, and you know, there's a straight up and down phenomenon going on here. And so at the, at the real end of the day, I guess you could say, call it a vector, do that right there, you got it. Uh, they didn't really say much beyond that. So we're not going to worry about it. Uh, they didn't give us any data beyond that, so this is the data that we got, and it's good enough for us. So this is associated with the A vector, you guys. Good deal. Uh, for you know, for the for the two, uh, let's see how they actually label these. Uh, This scenario right here uh, for number, uh, let, let's keep going here. For This is the, the B scenario. Uh, for the B scenario, you got this. And uh, so let me just see. I mean, you'll see, I, I think my notes will make sense. Uh, the purpose of this whole discussion is to make sense out of these notes in case they don't. Um, all right, let's, let's see what we can say here. Well, there's, a, there's another tug of well, there, Here there was a tug of war. You saw how it ended. Here, they are pulling together. So let's add them together. They're going to go up in the positive J direction. Let's see what we got here. We got this guy extending his influence, R, 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 R plus R plus R, 3R distance. That dissipates 
in a sense, the, the answer is, is somewhat dissipated um, given the distances involved. One, two, three. Okay? Three of those R's. And whereas here, uh, the distance is only R. So, I mean, it's very conceivable that this actually contributes a bigger B field right here. This contributes a bigger B field right here than that does because the distance, it's got one third the distance away. So that's, that's an interesting scenario in its own right. Uh, if that's the case, get to it. Um, so we got mu zero, 2i over 2 pi r. Well, the r, I mean, none of this, the symbolism itself is not etched in stone. It's the mathematics and the physics that's kind of more or less etched in the stone that we talk about. So uh, the distance there is 3r. We're talking about this guy exerting the influence 3r away. So there you go. That's the scenario there. Uh, the other scenario. That's it. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a number of ways you can, you can play the whole thing. But when you're doing, once you do all the algebra that needs to be done, uh, you are looking at the scenario. It's, 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 it is some interesting algebra, no, no doubt. I mean, what happens is, uh, there's a number of ways you can play it. I mean, there, here's a 2, here's a 2, they cancel, and you got a 3 on the bottom. You got 3 pi r on the bottom. Here you got 2 pi r on the bottom. Well, the pi r is the same in both situations. The mu zero is the same in both situations. You basically got a situation of mu zero, um, you know, heck, I mean, how, how far do you want to go with this whole thing? I mean, what you got is, the i is the same too. I mean, the twos cancel, but here you got the three pi, three pi r. There's an, I, there's an i in both scenarios, and there is a three pi r here. Just put pi r here. Um, that's one over three. And this right here is a 1 over 2. You know, if you play it, I mean, if you can look at it carefully, you're getting to that point. Um, this right here is 2 over 6. This is 3 over 6. You add them together, you got 5 over 6. At the end of the day, the B vector we're talking about is going to be 5, 6, mu 0. I that's it. Um, so what are we talking about? Well, I mean we're we're talking we just answered this guy. What's going on with B? This guy right here is associated with location B. This guy right here was associated with location A. You can call it B sub B. Maybe that makes it a little bit easier to look at. Uh, and there you go. I mean, that's, that's basically the argument. Right here, uh, there's, some interesting, there's an interesting dynamic here, guys. Um, this is length R. This is length 2r. I didn't draw it too well, but that's a, per that's a perpendicular right there. Here's r, here's 2r, and then you got this. This is also r, and this is also 2r, and that's the same length. So that's, that's of interest. Basically, the triangles in play that are going to help us do all the trigonometry are identical in both scenarios. The difference is the magnitude of what's going on. I think our gut feeling's got to be the following. This guy down here is pretty small. This guy right here is pretty big. And in fact, in terms of magnitude, this is twice as big as that. Because everything else is the same. Mu zero is the same. Uh, two pi r is the same. Whatever the r happens to be, the r is going to be this mess right here, whatever it's going to be. Again, you've got to do the Pythagorean theorem to get there. Uh, if you're talking about the, the length of what's going on, if this is 2r and this is 1r, what's that going to be? 
Well, I mean, it's going to be at the end. I mean, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. This is where they're getting that. Uh, you know, your guess is as good as, you know, you, you can look at it. Uh, for, at the end of the day, you wheel and deal with this thing the right way, you're going to get r times the square root of 5. The r squareds come out, and square root of r squared is just r. This is 1, this is 4, it's going to be the square root of 5. That's the length of this guy. That's also the length of that guy. There ain't no difference there. There's no difference in anything here, with one exception. This has got twice as much current going through it, which means it's going to be twice as much B field here. So when I do the vector sum, that's going to, that's going to be something of significance. Okay, so let me erase uh, probably a good amount of stuff and, 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 and run right after this last one that I think we need to do. Let's see exactly. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, okay, I got a little more ambitious than I should have got, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, find an expression. Find an expression for the magnetic field of points A and B. They didn't ask us for C. Yeah, great. I'm the rocket scientist that actually proposed we do C now, right? Uh, let me just give you a quick, uh, just a real quick look at it. How would you do it? I think, like I said, the big thing is that there's going to be perfect symmetry here. They're going to hit right here at some this angle theta right here and that angle theta right there. Uh, are going to are going to play a big role in what's going on here, um, and how that would actually play out. That's a, that's a good question in its own right. So let's see exactly uh, something I'd like to say regarding that. Um, they're both. I probably have to draw that. We don't need to do this, guys. Uh, but once we started it, you guys know the old saying: "Become Mr. Hoyle of the Hoyle If you enter the dance, you got to dance. Uh, so let's see what we can say here. Let me quickly just give a quick look. But this, this, this is all that you really needed on this one. Let me give you some kind of a gut feeling for what's happening vis-a-vis -vis this. It's two R straight down, uh, and we've got this going over there. Let's just see it really quickly, guys. Might as well. It's really useful stuff in that regard, I think. So I, we're already done with the problem, but let's, like I said, <clears throat> let, me, let me give you a quick gut feeling for it, even if we don't take it all the way down. Uh, if you're looking at something right here, if you're looking at, so R and R, so this is, um, let's see how far apart they are, yeah, it would be total two R apart and then two R straight down. So R and R on that one. Okay, so. You got this guy right down the middle, I guess you could say. Um, take him right here and that's two R. Uh, we said R, 2R, R, 2R. Let me just give you some gut feeling for it. You got this. Uh, right when it hits, right, right at the tangent to the circle, uh, and we said this was 2I and that was I. Right to the tangent to the circle, this would be perpendicular. And it'd be pretty big because it's 2I. Uh, this guy hits right here, same exact kind of triangle, same exact kind of triangle, and it's going to be perfect. It's going to be perpendicular to this guy, but not as long. In fact, I'll tell you, not as long. Whatever the B field is here, whatever the B field is for the small guy, this guy is going to be two B in terms of magnitude. In addition to that. <clears throat> Okay, you determine a whole bunch of stuff here. 